The entrance hymn is number 652, River of Glory. of glory springs of our birth flood of God's riches poured on the earth we are born from the darkness and clothed in the light we are bathed in the glory of God fountain flowing free streams of salvation spilling with love from a tree river of glory springs of our birth blood of God's riches poured on the earth we are born darkness and clothing the light, we are bathed in the glory of God. Here there is haven, healing and health, joy for the asking, love in abundance of wealth. River of glory springs of our birth, flood of God's riches poured on the earth. We are born from the darkness and clothed in the light. We are made in the glory of God. For our journey, God will provide hope for all ages. Jesus, companion and guide, river of glory springs of our birth, flood of God's riches. Born from the darkness and clothed in the light, we are bathed in the glory of God. River of glory springs of our birth, flood of God's riches. And clothed in the light, we are bathed in the glory of God. We are bathed in the glory of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show Never world, no. 
nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk alone? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleophas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor in, to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one who redeemed Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that, he, that they had indeed seen a vision of, of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. 
How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I come on. Good morning, everyone. You know, just that simple greeting means a lot to me. Just one short good morning, everyone, means that you are here, means that God is attentive to your voice, means that you are free to worship our God. And that is what life is all about. How are you? How are you doing? Good? Don't lie to me. How are you? How are you feeling? You know, today's gospel is all about our lives. Today's gospel is about your life, your life, your life, my life. Today's gospel is about human beings, as always. Life is a journey. You know the beginning. You don't know when this is going to end. You know that every day you have to face challenges. You know that every day is a new adventure. Here we are right now, 8.25 on Sunday. Tomorrow, I don't know where will I be. I don't know if I will stay here with you. I don't know. So life is like these two disciples of the Lord who left Jerusalem and going back to their homes. That's life. In that journey, in that, in that way to their homes, they remembered all the things they shared with Jesus. There were two disciples who were with the Lord all of the time, like ourselves. They spent three years with Jesus. They were, th they were there when Jesus cured the sick. They were there when Jesus multiplied the bread. They were there when Jesus performed so many miracles. They were there when he died on the cross, like us. But now they're upset. They're sad. They're feeling down like us. Life is beautiful, but there is always something which takes our peace away. There is always something which takes our cool away. There is always something which takes your joy, your happiness away. And life changes. Lord, I'm good. Lord, I always try to fulfill your will. Lord, I try to follow your commandments. What is going on here? But you know what the beauty of this gospel is? That God knows our struggles. That God knows all the things we face every day. And even without telling him what happened, he come to us. As he came to these two disciples going to Emmaus. He comes to us and he walks with us. Even if you don't see the Lord, even if you don't feel his presence, Jesus is always there. Remember that promise before he went to heaven. I will be with you always, 
until the end of the world. When you feel that you are breaking apart, when you feel that you are going down, when, when you feel that you are collapsing, the Lord comes to you and gives you his hand. And the Lord will say, it, take it easy. All is good. I am with you. This is not the end. You have me. And they, they couldn't recognize the Lord because they were so into their problems that they, they couldn't feel the presence of Jesus. Like us. When everything turns dark around us, we know that God exists. We know that the Lord is good. But I don't feel you, Lord. I cannot sense you, Lord. And the Lord comes to us in such a beautiful way. But you have to invite the Lord to stay with you. Lord, I need you. Lord, come to me. Lord, give me peace. Lord, you know what I need. Yes, the Lord knows what we need. But he wants to hear those things from, from our lips, from our heart. The Lord comes to us and says, are you sick? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? He's expecting for an answer. Yes, Lord, I am. Don't be afraid to share what you have, what you are with the, sorry, with the Lord. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to open your soul to Jesus. Take your heart out from your chest. Say, Lord, this is my heart. From the outside, all of us looks beautiful, happy, joyful. Like. Like this lily, right? The one you can see is beautiful. It's amazing, looks gorgeous. But in the back, not that much. But Jesus comes and says, Lord, I fix you. I take everything which is bad from you, that you look better. And But don't worry. One more, a new one will come out. And that's how you're going to experience the beautiful things I can do through you, for you, and in you. So, my brothers, my sisters, all will be well. Don't rush. Take it easy. All will be well. Remember that. This is what we are not. This is what we are, but the Lord can change us. The Lord can do things new again if you allow him to walk with you, and as he seems he's leaving you, just say, Lord, stay with me. Lord, come, come to my place, come to my house, sit around the table, and give me what I need. And the Lord says in the gospel, this is my body, this is my blood. Take and eat, take and drink. This is all we need, Jesus Christ. When we try to fix our lives looking for something different from the outside, the Lord will say, the only thing you need is me. Come back to me and I will make you new. Come back to me and you will find beautiful things. Come back to me and all will be well. The experience of the disciple of Emmaus is our lives. It resembles the things we face every day. Perhaps you are fine. Perhaps your soul, your heart is good. But sometimes you suffer because of your kids, because of your spouse, because of your parents, because of your friends. How about that father or mother who suffered for his children? How about that child who suffered for his, his or her parents? How about the, the, the husband who suffers because of his wife or vice versa? All will be well. Remember, the Lord walks with you. The Lord will never abandon you. When you leave your home doubting, upset, feeling down, remember, he is next to you. He's always with you, always. And at the breaking of the bread, he will show you himself. That is the importance of the Holy Eucharist, the body of Christ. And just at that moment, Remember that line from this gospel. Lord, stay with us, for it is near, nearly evening, 
and the day is almost over. Stay with me, O oh Lord. Come to me, and with you I will never be afraid again. As we celebrate this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us walk with the Lord to Emmaus. Let us recognize him at the breaking of the bread. Let us open ourselves to that experience. And remember, you are not like this. You're a beautiful flower in the garden of God because the Lord has performed amazing things in your life. Turn to the Lord and see the beauty of him. Turn to the Lord and see the beautiful things that he has done to you and through you. Turn to the Lord and all things will be well. And after they recognized him at the breaking of the bread, they returned to Jerusalem rejoicing, happy, because they have seen the Lord again. Let us encounter Jesus with the same attitude, knowing that he is always with us, for us and in us. This is what I do every day. This is if, even as when I said, hey, good morning to you. Just one simple, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm blessed. Just one small, short answer can change your life. Smile to one another. Be nice to one another. Just be there for your people. Because remember, in somebody else's life, you are Jesus. In somebody else's life, you are the one who go to that encounter. In somebody else's life, you are the only sign of hope, joy, mercy, full success. In somebody else's life, you are the Savior. Be good, do good, and all will be well. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. And together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, is adored and glorified, was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with the disciples on their way to Emmaus, let us ask Christ to stay with us while to listen and answer all our prayers. For all who seek truth and for all who guide truth seekers, let us pray to the Lord. For civil authorities and for all who work towards the common good, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the unemployed, and all struggling to make ends meet, as well as for all who try to walk in the way of the Lord, yet have strayed from the path, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who carry new life and those searching for a reason to enjoy it, that they may be comforted in the hope and joys life brings, let us pray to the Lord. For all present in the holy place and for all who recognize the Lord in one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, Pedro Barreto, Julia Hogan, Bernard and Nora Ard, Kevin and Mustafa, Joseph, Ellen Smith, and those listed in the bulletin, that the Lord will restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that have died in the peace of Christ, 
Mary DeRubo, John Monteforte, Louis Gonzalo Tenasaka Ludisaka, Scott Gazigliai, Charles J. Pierce, Robert Brombeck, sir, Rosa Irene Rivera, Timothy John Murphy, Louis Humberto Zahini, and especially for Francis and Emma Fonseca, as well as Liberta Poliponi, that they may be welcomed in the company of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a few seconds of silence, let us present to God our own prayers and needs. Merciful Father, you opened our eyes to your Son. Hear our needs and grant what we will bring us closer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. The Offertory Hymn is number 509, We Remember. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gift we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defend us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb, one slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly give you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, 
and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblations of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, everyone.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia!
that in your mercy you have sheltered me. Oh, shelter me. Oh, shelter me. The way your head is dark and difficult to see. Oh, shelter me. Oh, shelter me. All will be well if only you will shelter me. All will be well if Just two announcements before we go home. Number one, a week from today, next Sunday, there will be a mass at 3 p.m. in honor of St. Joseph the Worker in Italian here in the church. So next Sunday, April 30th, 3 p.m. mass in honor of St. Joseph the Worker in Italiano here in the church, followed by some refreshments downstairs in the Father Wilson Hall. And also next weekend, uh, we are going to begin the distribution of the envelopes for our Mother's Day Novena. So feel free to take as many as you need and want. And finally, save the date, please. Mother's Day, May 14th, 2.30 p.m. We are gonna, going to finally bless our chapel in our cemetery. So the chapel is almost completed. If you don't know, we built a nice chapel all the way in the back of Assumption Cemetery. You can feel free to go and check it out. It's beautiful. We can sit around 100 people there. So it's, it's nice. So go and take a look. So the Mass of Blessings is going to be on Mother's Day at 2.30 p.m. over there at the cemetery. Perhaps you can join us and pray for our beautiful mothers, whom some of them, even though are gone, the love of the mother never goes away. And let me ask you something. How are you? How are you doing? Good? If not, that's fine. Say no, I'm not good. But never forget that all will be well. Just pay sound and you will see how beautiful he is. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of that resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is sent. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in that. Be our defense against the wickedness, wickedness and against the snares of the devil. May God renew him with holy pray. And to thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the holy power of God, cross into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who proud of the world. Seek in the ring of souls. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. The recessional hymn is number 164. Alleluia. Love is alive. See